Hey guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? If my voice sounds weird, it's because remember on yesterday's video when I was coughing a bunch? Well, I think I got the black lung pops. Okay, so back in the office, first day, I started getting kind of wheezy and stuff. I've complained about the, uh, the office air quality kind of sucking on previous videos, especially when I used to work the 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shifts or the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shifts because they turn the HVAC off and it gets like the swamps of Dagobah up there. Well, the air quality hasn't improved over the years and I honestly think Nikki might be right when she mentioned that there is a potential that because the building wasn't used for pretty much two years, that they shut off the HVAC and there was probably moisture in there that turned into mold. Because I'm sick as frig right now. I feel like hell. Like I got a sore throat and my nose is running. It's probably not COVID. I'm not getting it checked either because I really don't care if it is because we're done with that. So I just feel rough. Probably gonna get to bed early tonight, but there's some stuff I wanted to touch on. You can probably hear the printer going back there. By the way, we need to give that guy a name. I was thinking like, I don't know. I wasn't thinking of a good name. If you guys got a name we can give the 3D printer, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, right now I'm printing uh, some Whopper ploppers. I tried to print some Whopper ploppers last night and uh, the end result didn't quite work out. Yeah, didn't quite work out. I don't know why it exploded, but it totally exploded. So I just binned the whole ordeal. But I mentioned I was printing off the Skivens logo and anybody on my Instagram saw it already. But there she be, the Skivens logo. Now I did screw up the outer edge a bit. I gotta fix that. I, I put a ring around, like a rim around it, so it's a little bit recessed, cause it's like, it's all 3D and stuff. Cause that's what you do with a 3D printer. You print 3D molds and 3D items. But I wanted the ring to be the same diameter of the oval and somehow I cocked that over. So we're gonna fix that. But this is like the Mark I Skivens that I made from scratch using my Skivens logo, an oval and a ring. I feel like a freaking engineer right now, let me tell you. And then I was trying to make my friend Clifford something special and it didn't quite turn out and I gotta work on it. It's a guitar pick with the Mackenzie Drive logo on it. What was that? Oh, shit. For some reason, the filament fell out. I don't know why this was working and the filament just totally ejected. See, see what happens with the stock filament it comes with? Like, look at this bullshit. This is why people don't use the stock filament. They usually just bin it and just put a roll on. But I'm such an anti-waster that I'm all about not wasting materials. Now these are probably not gonna turn out. And this print is actually working well, except for the, the tail. That looks like spaghetti soup, but I'm gonna try and feed this piss through again. Where the hell was it? I don't like the fact that you gotta take the extruder knob off just so you can see where it goes in. I also don't like how it just all of a sudden started cooling the platter again. But yeah, the freaking the line broke. There's still line in there. Freaking PLA is a piece of junk, but anyway. So I did the Skivens logo and I did this guitar pick and I showed you guys the dog yesterday. So that's kind of some, some kind of fun I've been having. Something else I'm gonna be doing is it's gonna take 46 grams of plastic, not a big deal, and about five hours and 40 minutes of print time. But if it works, I'll have a mold, uh, a two part mold of a swim bait. So like I clip it together and then clamp it with some clamps to hold it still. And then I can just pour plastisol on the top. You wait for it to cool, you separate it, and you have a flippy flappy flounder to, to fish, the fish with. That's kind of neat. So I don't have any whopper ploppers in my arsenal of baits, which is why I've been trying to print them. So far, this is test number two and mid print, the PLA broke. So that kind of sucks. But anyway, that's not what today's video is about, guys. Thought I'd show you the couple things I printed and designed and had fun making, like the Skivens logo. This guitar pick, which didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to. It's got some more work to be done. But uh, today what it's about is my poor LG television. It doesn't work anymore. Like you can see the light is on, but soon you'll see that there's nobody home. You press the button, it flickers, watch it turn on. Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? 
Okay, I shit you not, I tried to turn that thing on so many freaking times. It's been two weeks actually. It broke uh, two Saturdays ago. So Nikki was up this past weekend and I was like, yeah, like the only problem is if we wanna watch a movie, we're gonna have to pick one of the monitors to watch a movie on because the TV itself is broken. Now, I don't know if you can hear this. I'm gonna put the mic really close to the TV so you can hear it. I don't know if you could hear that over the laser printer, but this TV is literally making this like this zapping sound. I know it's because the power capacitor is bleeding out. I've been looking for my paycheck from the Ontario government for the two years when I bought stickers for my car. And it finally came in the mail and this puppy sucker came in at $230. And I don't know why. The reason why I say I don't know why is, well, no, I shouldn't say that. In 2020 and 2021, I had a sticker on the car because I bought a two-year sticker for the Trans Am and a two-year sticker for the truck because I always register two years at a time if I don't plan on getting rid of the vehicle because if you're not gonna get rid of it, why inconvenience yourself the following year to have to go to Service Ontario just to buy a sticker to put on your license plate? You're not saving money also buying in bulk, so buying a two-year versus buying a one-year it's either you're paying $60 or $120. I know, people are from Toronto, they pay $120 a year, $240. It's like once you get past a certain threshold, I think it's Huntsville, like past Aurelia, it's 60 bucks. And I don't know why, I don't make the rules, I don't even investigate them, I honestly don't care. So they gave me 240 bucks back, and I was like, well this is sweet, like that came in the Thursday before Nikki got here, which was last Thursday. And I'm like, well, if I can't get this LG to go, She's a nine year old, uh, 13 year old TV. I bought it in 2009. We used it downstairs originally to play video games on the PS3, the old Xbox 360, all that shit was on it. And that's where I used it. And then there was a stint where it was my editing monitor when I first started the Vlog and Life series. Uh, it was the monitor that I edited on. I had it on this mess of a desk back here, but it was downstairs in the living room. If you guys remember that, I was editing on that. Well, I decided that uh, because it was broken and I couldn't get it to power on, I tried power cycling, like uh, unplugging the power from the back and plugging it back in. And I tried everything I could possibly think of to get that thing to go, except for obviously leaving it off for seven days and then pressing the power button because that's literally what happened. I turned it off on Thursday. I could try to turn it on Thursday. And all that would happen is that red light I showed you down here, the red light, she would flash, flash, turn off. You'd hear a tick, tick and then it would go back to red light. It would never actually display video. So I didn't know what the heck to do with it. I was like, well, and then that check came in. I thought I was only getting a check for 120 bucks. Honestly, you guys, I thought that's all I was getting. 120 bucks in the mail, good to go. But no, 240, so hey, pimp. <coughs> I've been eyeballing this TV at Future Shop, Best Buy, whatever, for the past little while because I've never owned a smart TV in the history of owning a smart TV. I always told my parents, don't get a smart TV. They're not that smart. They're kind of stupid because once they decide to no longer support the operating system, your smart TV is literally just a TV with a bunch of apps that won't work anymore. And my parents are slowly starting to realize that with their current smart TV, they can watch the YouTube app. That works still. They can watch the Netflix app, that works still. But the Amazon Videos app is not Amazon Prime movies. It's like, remember when Amazon tried to become the new YouTube and failed miserably? That's Amazon Video. So I really wanted a TV that was a smart TV, but I didn't know what to get. Like you can get the Samsungs with their Samsung Smart, but then you're at the mercy of Samsung. So then I was like, well, I got two options. The Roku, which, I actually have one of those kicking around here somewhere. So I have a Roku right here. And I wasn't a fan of Roku because it had a lot of features. Now maybe this changed over the years. I'm, that's an old stick, it's really slow, it's kind of garbage. But it had a lot of options for TV shows, but everything was you had to pay for a subscription. There wasn't any free things on there like YouTube or Spotify, but that was an old service back then, probably pre-Spotify. The new Roku is probably pretty good, probably pretty good. But I was like, no, I'm not gonna bother with the Roku. 
And the only other option was Android TV or now known as Google TV. So I did some searching and I'm like, well, this thing's a 32 inch display, right? With a bezel thick enough that it becomes a 42 inch display. But the real screen to screen real estate, she's 30 inch, uh, 32 inches, 31.3 or 31.56 or something like that. They call it a 32. 720p, pretty nice color on it. It is what it is. So I was like, well, I'm gonna get another 32 inch smart TV. So I started looking around. Walmart had a Philips and it was running a Roku and they wanted um, 219. I was like, okay, that's not a bad price. And then I found a couple other ones over at Future Shop. They had a small Samsung with the Samsung version of their uh, smart TV. And it was about 229 for a 32 inch. And then I found what I wanted, TCL. 32 inch with Google TV, or they call it Android TV, but now it's Google TV because it gets the update and it becomes Google TV. It was on for 199 and I was like, okay. And on Saturday, I was like, like Nikki and I were trying to find something to do. I'm like, well, you want to take a quick rip over to Best Buy and we can go walk around the mall and I can show you what we don't have. I forgot I already did that once in the winter. We went for a walk in the mall and I showed her what we don't have because a lot of the stores left during COVID because they couldn't afford to pay the rent and not have clients because you know, who could? She's like, well, we can, or we can go for a walk with the dog. And I'm like, you know, let's just take the dog for a walk. I'll go next week sometime. So we went and took the dog for a walk. And then good thing we did because yesterday, before I even came home to set up the, la the uh, 3D printer, by the way, guys, we need a name, comment section down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna call it Trevor. Before we even set that up, I took a rip over to Best Buy because the TCL TV that was on for $199, for some reason was getting a two day flash sale to $179. Today is the last day of that sale. And just because I got in flack, people were like, you're lying. You're just making up that price so that your mom won't care. But guys, you don't realize I'm 43 and my mother doesn't control my bankroll. I, I don't know why he would think that. I'm gonna go on Best Buy's site right now uh tcl 32 i think i should be able to find it here yeah there she is there's the tv there it's a tcl series 3 32 inch 720p hd led android smart tv part number on sale until april 7th seriously it's a flash sale i wasn't even expecting that i just went and looked at it i was like i wonder how many they have Ugh, i wonder how many they have left tuesday because i was like maybe after work because i'm going to be driving well i can drive right by the mall or i cannot depending on the situation i was like let's go see so i walked in there they had three on the floor and i said 199 and i said are you guys honoring the current sale price and they're like there's a sale on these. I'm like, yeah, this says 179 on the site. And they said, well, if you have it on your phone and it's on the site, we're honoring it. I brought it to the cash. I didn't have to say shit. The machine registered it at 179. So 205 after tax is in and sorry for the mess over here. I got to take this outside. It's recycling, but we got ourselves a TV that we currently don't need because this one turned on. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. I honestly have no idea what the heck I'm going to do with this TV now. I guess I'll store it and if something breaks, I got a backup. I could put it in the bedroom and replace that Samsung with it. And then I wouldn't need a laptop in there because this thing literally is an Android TV with Google Now in it. So like, just like how I talk to my hockey pucks, I can talk to this thing. If I want this thing to play music, I can tell this thing to play music. What's even cooler about it is if I ever get back into the cameras that are compliant with Google Assistant, if somebody like, for instance, the Google doorbell, if somebody rings the doorbell and I'm up here, boom, TV automatically switches over to doorbell mode and shows me who's at the door. You know, I know you can buy those little hundred dollar jobbies with the built-in assistant, the little iPads that you can use to like look at recipes and stuff. A lot of people who have smart homes have them in their kitchen for that exact reason, but this TV can do all that. Now, if you have a dumb TV like that dumb TV, and you want the features of the Android TV for $67 Canadian, and I shit you not, $67 Canadian, you can get this new Google Chromecast that comes with a freaking remote, and unlike the old Chromecast, has a user interface. I actually looked them up online and they're pretty badass. Um, you can download uh, apps from the App Store, and one of the apps you can get, which really piqued my interest, was Steam Stream. Okay, Steam Stream, like let's say I wanna play Red Dead Redemption downstairs on the, on the 55 inch. 
I can Steam stream it, use my gaming PC to play it, but it'll pipe the video to the Google Hockey Puck downstairs, attach the TV, and I can play it on the TV downstairs with a Bluetooth controller. So I can go out and buy like one of the newer uh, Xbox controllers, the, the, the Xbox One or whatever the hell they're called. I don't know, they changed the name of it, so stupid. But um, I can go out and buy one of the new controllers for the new Xboxes and totally chuck that thing and Bluetooth link it to the Chromecast because it has Bluetooth. Like even my TV here has Bluetooth. The friggin' thing is stacked with settings. Like, let me just get this box out of the way. And like, it's, 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 a, it's really good. So you got HD picture quality, whatever. It's got advanced digital TV tuner and live TV channels, who cares? Google Assistant, it's got, where's the, the cool stuff? The reason why I really wanted it. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got HDMI, but it also has Bluetooth on it. And I can't find where it shows that. So I know it's on the website, because I read up on this TV and then I looked it up and one person talked, actually everybody talked pretty highly of it. One guy said it was shit because uh, he didn't realize that it didn't come with Netflix subscription or something. I don't know, you always get that one person who reviews the product and he's like, I didn't know you had to wash the shirt. I thought you just bought it and wore it. You know, one of those idiots. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, where the frig are the reviews? Like it got a 3.8 out of six and like great TV at this price point. Not good, the guy, I purchased this TV a year and a half ago now. Great picture and sound, but now the picture freezes every five minutes and I have to change the channel to unfreeze it. Well, I don't plan on watching TV with it, so nice. Excellent value for the price. One of the best things I ever bought. Good overall. Like the other reviews looked pretty decent. The one guy just slammed it saying that his cable TV kept locking up. Once again, there's variables in play. For all we know, his cable TV is still one of those great big antennas that go up into the sky and act like a lightning rod, and he's literally just getting piss poor signal, or he's got a poor cable provider or a cable box that isn't giving a clean signal, and it's causing the TV to receive bad information, and the TV's crashing on it. Who knows? Who knows what it is, but that's the problem. These reviews, you really have to read into them and take them for what they are. You look for what you want. Literally, I was looking for a TV to sit beside me that I could use to watch YouTube, use to watch Netflix, and have attached a computer too, so if I needed to do any of that. And that's why like this dumb TV right here is being used exactly for that, to watch YouTube and Netflix. And I use one of these air mice right here to move the cursor around, like you can see on the screen there. Where is it? It's that squiggly line, because I need to reboot the computer it's attached to. But you move your mouse around by, by like a Wiimote. But no infrared required, because this uses accelerometers and not a big IR sensor because uh, modern ages. So now I totally don't need to set that TV up. I'm not gonna say it's upsetting, but it's kind of upsetting. I don't like wasting things. Like I totally wasted $205 on that TV, but I also don't wanna return it because I know I'm gonna return it and then something's gonna happen. I'm gonna need a TV and then I'm gonna pay full price for it. Or they just won't have them in stock because this is from 2021. This is old stock they found in the back of a warehouse somewhere at Best Buy cor corporations. And because it's the Canadian model, the CA, they're like, what do we do with this? And they're like, ah, hell, put it up for 200 bucks. Somebody will buy it. And they're like, okay, we got to get rid of these. They're old, the new model's coming out soon. And it's 200 bucks. And they're like, well, we'll just offload them for like 179. And they're like, cool, bro, do. So, but yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. Cause uh, that LG was supposed to be broken. Totally isn't. Isn't life fun? All right, guys. So I, I let the 3D printer make the ploppers while I was busy editing up the video from assembling the 3D printer. And while I was assembling, check this out. We have two fully functional Whopper ploppers. Can I break them off the bed yet? I'm going to spatula them off the blood. Uh, I'm gonna spatula them off the bed because they don't want to release. So ignore the um, the threading on them. This is just structure material. That's gonna come off with ease. I'm not worried about that, but that fin is aggressive and that's gonna catch some serious water. And the hole goes all the way through it to run your wire. Let's get one of the front pieces off here. We do have a bit of a flat side here. I think if I ever do this again, I might put support structure just so it can stay off the ground because this side's nice and rounded and this side's flat as frig. It's not supposed to be like that, but whatever. We'll sand it. This one here turned out not so bad on the flat side. Yep, I'm gonna put a BB in there and then we'll super glue baking soda and then we have another tail. So, two Whopper ploppers ready for assembly. 
Now you're probably saying, Adam, why the frig didn't you just go to like Canadian Tire or something and buy a damn Whopper Plopper? Why do you gotta be a cheapskate and print one? Well, cause two reasons. Number one, it's cool cause now I got some stuff to paint. And number two, Canadian Tire wants 15 freaking dollars for a Whopper Plopper. Now mind you, it's action's probably gonna be better than what I printed, but we'll have to wait and see. Once the ice clears the lake, I might just take these down to Armstrong and sail them out and Whopper Plop across the top just to see what it's like. But right now there's still ice on the lake. When I took Nikki there last week, or on the weekend to show her the lake, she was like, wow, there's still ice. Like the where the dock is, that's all in thawed, but there's ice all the way out. So there's no way I can actually sit there and set up a, um, so there's no way I could sit there and send a lure out and then reel it in and actually test it. Now, the grand total for this I think they said was about six grams of plastic. It's three grams per Whopper Plopper. Six grams of plastic, a big spool, like I got two spools inside of this box here of uh, PLA Plus. It's about $30 a spool, give or take. And a spool is a one kilo. Sorry, I'm just trying to clean the plastic off this tray. I gotta buy some rubbing alcohol. I have some kicking around somewhere. I think it's in the garage. I think I use it to dilute my paint when I'm when I'm spraying. That's another thing I gotta learn this year is how to air spray better so I can do gooder at air spraying. But there we go, bed's clean. That's one thing that um, my buddy told me about 3D printing. My buddy Chuck, he said, invest in a few bottles of rubbing alcohol. He goes cleaning the bed with that. Really makes the print stick. But I think if I print off more Whoppers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, some sort of a suspension material or whatever to basically get it off the bed so it's not sitting flat on the bed. Or I might rotate them so the bottom sits flat and then it prints them upright or upside down maybe, I don't know. Just so the back is flat, maybe. And that way there, there'll be more material on the bottom and it'll have the weight on the bottom so it'll wanna sit upright and plop in the water. But it's gonna wanna sit upright because I'm gonna have a treble hook off the bottom, a treble hook off the tail, a BB in the gut. I don't know how heavy it's gonna be. Right now they weigh nothing. Like one of these literally weighs nothing. And I did 80, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anybody watch 3D this video, new 3D prints? I did 80% infill. I know, I know it's not needed, but it's gonna be one solid friggin' bait. So like, it should be able to take a snap from a pike. Now I do gotta get some pretty thin wire to route through there to hold the um, the bottom swivel as well as the uh, go through the friggin' the tail and into a bead and then into the back end into a treble. I have 20 gauge and 18 gauge, but judging by the gauge, she's way too gaugey, so I'm gonna have to take her up to like a 24, maybe a 26. What the hell was that? I also wanted to show you guys the backyard because the backyard is pretty much empty of snow. There's like a couple large piles from when I was snow blowing this year to create the path to go out to the uh, fire pit. But other than that, you can see the muddy grass and it looks pretty badass. And you can tell where the rabbits were going to take shits because there's a huge massive pile of rabbit shit sitting in the middle of the uh of the yard so that's pretty awesome i appreciate that thank you bunny rabbits but yeah i don't know how i was thinking about it while i was editing what i'm gonna do with that tv and i think what i'm gonna do is the sin the, the samsung in the bedroom it's got the lines through it right she's pretty much she's pretty rough the lcd is in bad shape so what i was thinking was i've been always wanting a tv in the garage somewhere i don't know where but i think i might set up that television in the garage so that we got something to watch when we're out there dicking around and then i might take the lg that's working and put that in the bedroom and hook it up to the laptop so i can stream movies on a big screen so like if nikki's over and she's like well, let's just go lay in bed and watch netflix we can just go lay in bed and watch netflix if uh we just want to chillax and do that we can so that's all right i've seen a couple people where they put the tv at the end of the bed and i thought about doing that too like wall mounting it but then i remember there's no joists in that wall to put a wall mount onto because literally that, that hole upstairs before they made that little red room was one open concept loft. You would go upstairs and it was a wide open loft. There was no bedroom in there. The wall that you see uh, where, on the backside of the 3D printer, that wall probably has joists sitting 
maybe friggin like 80 feet apart or something like it's not exactly structurally sound my neighbor put their garbage out and that's what i'm hearing their garbage cans are being thrown around so my driveway is going to be covered in garbage again tomorrow so i get to look forward to that that's going to be really appreciated i'm going to put my garbage out tomorrow in the morning after i let oreo out but as for me right now guys i want to get to bed early tonight because i feel like shit. gotta beat this damn cold i don't think this is anything else this literally feels like a cold like my head hurts my throat's a little raw from coughing and i got a runny nose it's the problem is is who cares about covid that's what the problem is who cares about it? i i've had the covid a long time ago back in 2020 and i'm pretty sure i had the friggin omicron variant again a couple times because felt a little woozy and i could tell the difference between that between this little pissy cold that i have so i'll get over this in a couple days we'll be back to business as normal everything will be hunky dory and happy uh, you know this is what happens when you isolate for two years and this is why the whole the whole situation is stupid is because if you don't get around people and you don't expose yourself to different viruses and stuff and let your immune system do its job if you're wearing a mask all freaking day long not breathing in foreign objects and putting your body to work your immune system she going to get lazy and when she going to get lazy that's when you're going to get infected by random shit and isn't the dog coming yet or he's at the door but that's just my two cents on it and i think i isolated better than anybody else like i literally looked at my it was funny this thing popped up and it said look at your google history from 2021 because like every time you travel with your phone it'll show you where you went on your map and i literally went nowhere in 2021 like not until the end when i went to uh santa's wonderland there to go visit nikki and then in the winter i went to uh that cabin in bracebridge like for christmas but other than that i literally traveled nowhere every once in a while i left the house to go get provisions like groceries and shit. but other than that i didn't drive anywhere so i'm looking at it and it's like on this day, home, on this day, home, on this day, like a whole like six days, it literally says I stayed home. I didn't go anywhere. So like I isolated better than anybody else in the world of ever. And that's pretty awesome. And I don't know why he is looking at me like that or even standing like that. Why are you standing like that? What's wrong with you? Like, I know what's wrong with you. You're a Pomeranian, but like in reality, what are you doing? What are you freaking doing right now? Oh, you're wiping dog shit on the floor. Lovely. There we go, dog shit cleaned. And it looks like tomorrow I gotta take the scissors and or the razor and or the nair to my dog's ass and bring it back down to a bare body. But he will be getting a full body shave again very freaking soon because summer's back and I'm knocking his fur down to the wood again because that was freaking awesome last year and I think it'll do him good this summer. He won't be as as hot as the past couple summers. But anyway guys, I uh, can't remember what the hell I was talking about. Oh yeah, so I'm thinking about moving the, putting that Google TV in the room and then moving the, the uh, LG to the bedroom and then moving the Samsung out to the garage. And I got plenty of old laptops that are stuck on Windows 7 that I can hook up to it and that way there I got a way to watch YouTube out there so if I'm doing a project or something and I need a video reference well I'll have one to use I don't need to grab my phone like I did in the past years or even if I hook up my old Chromecast out there and I grab my phone and I can send it to the actual TV to uh, look at it whatever I do it'll work but yeah I'm not gonna bother doing any of that moving of the TVs tonight because I'm pretty friggin done it's almost 10 o'clock I need to get to bed and get some sleep tonight so that's what I'm going to do. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. I'm going to jump in the shower. Hopefully that there will help my throat and everything else and make me feel a thousand times better. So until next time, guys, remember, live it to win it. Peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.